the Glock Model 30 in 45 ACP. Let's check it out. Glock Model 30 is a 10 round capacity compact 45 ACP pistol. Uh, this is really designed for the American market. Uh, 45 ACP has always been very popular here in the US. But this was the compact version. In 1991, they introduced the Model 21, which is a 13 plus one capacity, and it is a full size pistol. Very thick, uh, but yet very capable. I mean, it is Glock reliability. Uh, the one thing about either the 21 or the Model 30 is that they are thick, but yet they have a higher round capacity than your standard 1911. And that's one of the big appeals. And it really brings a smaller package than your standard 1911, and yet bumps it up to two extra rounds. This is the Gen 4 version, but they still make the Gen 3 and the Gen 3 SF. Because guys, this grip is thick. And to me, it's really nice to have that little smaller grip to be able to fit my hand. If you have larger hands, the standard Gen 3 may be just the ticket. I was looking for a Model 30. I got a call from a good friend of mine who had one for sale, and I was happy to pick it up. The Glock Model 30 Compact 45 ACP. Um, 10 plus one magazine capacity. We'll go ahead and drop our magazine. Uh, typically they come with just a flush base plate. I bought this from a buddy of mine and he'd already changed these out, which I would have done myself. Uh, and let's check the gun, make sure it's unloaded. Uh, one of the things about this grip is that it is really small. And so if you have just a standard base plate, just right here that comes at the edge, you know, you're only going to be able to get two fingers on here, uh, very much like the Glock 26. And so here, it just gives you that extra grip. And so I personally like doing that. In fact, on my Glock Model 29, which is in 10 millimeter, I have one of the finger extensions. I try to do that with the subcompacts because it doesn't add a lot, and yet it makes it much more shootable. But overall, this is just a thicker Glock pistol. Uh, the slide is much thicker than your standard Glock slide. Uh, the grip is also larger to accommodate the 45 ACP. Uh, and, you know, 45 is just bigger than 9mm, so they did that with this thicker grip. This was introduced in 1997, and the big brother, the Model 21, was introduced in 1991. This was also introduced along with the Glock 10mm. And 45 ACP Glocks were really targeted for American consumers. And so it was really nice to have these options. The 10mm definitely is very popular, but 45 ACP has just been known as a great man stopper. But again, this is also a very large pistol. Now this is actually a Gen 3 SF for slim frame. Uh, this is the Gen 4, which is the same grip, but we're able to put different back straps on here. And it comes with four different back straps. And you'll notice this little beaver tail back strap. Uh, this will fit, after you drive this pin out, just pop this in, put the pin back in, and it actually gives you more of a beaver tail to be able to have more control over this firearm. In fact, on my Glock Model 20 10mm, that's what I have on there because I like that little bit longer. It does make the grip just a little bit thicker, but it really helps to control it. And it comes with a tool to be able to switch those grips out. The 21 is a 13 plus 1 magazine, and the Model 30 is a 10 plus 1 magazine. And of course, like all the typical Glocks, you can remove the magazines of the larger and put them in the smaller. And so that way you could carry 13 plus one if you wanted to, but it does hang out. But I like this 10 rounder if it has that small extension on it. It just definitely gives you more control. 
And these are the two areas that you grab typically when you're shooting. This is where you put your pressure. And the texturing and these finger grooves fit the hand very well. Now, again, with the finger grooves on the Gen 5s, they've kind of done away with that, but they haven't come out with a Gen 5 in their bigger frame pistols. Now, the Gen 4 not only has backstrap options, it also has the magazine release can be switched to the other side. And that's one of the things the Gen 3 did not offer. They also offered Gen 4 magazines, which have cuts on either side instead of on the Gen 3, which only have cuts on one side. And so that was a big upgrade. Uh, and also they did upgrade the recoil system. We'll take a look at that in a minute. But you do get a one slot Glock rail. This typically fits most of your Picatinny rails. Uh, and then you have your slide stop here. And we have our standard Glock takedown levers right here. The slide serrations are straight up and down, but they are very effective. Uh, and with the Gen 5s, they're now adding slide serrations to the front. But of course, this is not a Gen 5. The barrel length is 3.78 inches in length. Uh, and you can see the slide is really thick compared to your smaller frame Glocks, your Model 1917. Uh, and also the grip here is much thicker. Here I have a Model 19 and you can see the difference. I mean, it is a considerable difference in grip. 15 plus one here and 10 plus one here, but 45 ACP is a lot larger. But also a considerable difference in the slide width. And with the Model 19, you know, you've got a much thinner slide. Uh, one of the things they make, though, is the 30S. And the 30S actually uses the Glock Model 36 slide, which is thin like the 19. Now, this one's had some custom work done to it. But it's thin, and so it goes on the same frame. In fact, this slide will go on the Model 30 frame. And I guess vice versa, but the slide would hang off the Model 36. Uh, this is a 6 plus 1 in the magazine, and it is a single stack. So it's very narrow. In fact, less width than even the Glock 19. But personally, I like the extra rounds, uh, the 10 rounds, even though this is a thicker pistol. And one of the things, too, about Glock is you can see the frame kind of comes out just a little bit, and it does that with all the Glocks. Uh, so you've got a fairly thick frame here. And then you've got a thick slide. Pyramid texturing on the Gen 4, which comes differently with the Gen 3. But uh, this is very aggressive. And then, of course, again, you have your finger grooves and you have pyramids all through here. And this is beveled at the front, which makes it nice. We have a trigger safety, and this is called a safe action pistol. And you have this little lever, and you can see it popping up when you press it. Otherwise, it won't fire. It won't. You can't pull the trigger. And this is for a full finger on your trigger. So we're going to go ahead. We got a little bit of take up and we got that standard Glock mushy trigger break, which is typical. Reset right there. And we'll check the trigger pull weight with our Lyman trigger gauge from Brownells. Five pounds, 8.1 ounces. And guys, there are a lot of aftermarket trigger options out there if you want it. But once you start shooting the Glock, you know, you really get used to it. It's 6.97 inches in overall length. It's 4.8 inches in overall height, and that's with the standard magazine base pad. Uh, the frame is 1.38 inches in width, but the slide comes in at 1.12 inches. The slide is definitely just a touch thinner than even the frame. And the weight on the Model 30. One pound, 10.4 ounces. We appreciate Fioki for sponsoring the ammo. Uh, all made in the USA, one of the largest suppliers of ammunition in the country. And uh, we also want to thank Lula Loaders for, for sending us loaders. Uh, these loaders will fit your standard 9mm double stacks or like these 45s uh, and even some of the single stacks. So it's a very versatile loader. And uh, it really saves our thumbs. Now the grip on the Model 30 is definitely one of the things that really makes a difference when you're at the range. I mean, it is thicker. Uh, this is a Gen 4, and so it gives you a little better grip to me than the actual original grip, which honestly was really large. And one of the reasons why I sold my Model 30 years ago. But it's a very pointable gun. And in 45 ACP, you do have some recoil i mean definitely what i decided to do was shoot it next to a 10 millimeter which is the exact same dimensions I wanted to shoot them side by side so first we shot the 45 
you know, put some rounds down range, and then just right there switch to the 10 millimeter. 10 millimeter definitely has more punch to it. Um, maybe even a little less muzzle flip, but definitely more punch to it. And then the 45 ACP has that slow push, and I really like it. One thing about this frame is thicker than the standard Glocks like the 26 or the 19 or 17. But with the 45 caliber, I'm beginning to really like the thickness, the added thickness. You know, you still have 10 rounds in the magazine and um, there are a lot of options for the magazine base pads. I recommend getting something that extends though just a little bit past because it does give you a full grip. But um, overall, these are great sights. We have some night vision sights on here and they really show up well day or night. But uh, 45 caliber, this is a great little pistol. Comparing it to the 10 millimeter, 10 millimeter definitely has more felt recoil. And again, that larger grip helps. So uh, I'm a big fan of these. They are thick, they're blocky, but just a big fan. 10 plus one is a really good mag capacity for 45 ACP, uh, especially in this size pistol. It again is considered a compact, but it has that same Glock feel to it, same Glock control. So if you're used to shooting Glock nine millimeters or 40 calibers, uh, this is a great gun to move up to if you're looking for that bigger bore. If you want the extreme ballistics, then you can go with the 10 millimeter, which I personally really like. But again, if you're used to shooting Glocks, this makes a great option in 45 ACP. All right, for disassembly, uh, we're gonna drop our magazine, go ahead and check the chamber. Uh, what we're gonna do first is you pull the trigger and then cock back just about an eighth of an inch and pull down on your takedown tabs. And then the slide comes right off. Uh, you let go of your recoil spring and guide rod. It is a dual spring system and our barrel and our slide. Uh, one of the things they've changed though is the recoil system uh, with the new Glocks. Um, it's just a double recoil spring system, especially with these smaller compacts. It really helps lessen the felt recoil. The barrel has polygonal grooves in it. Uh, they have upgraded to what they call the marksman barrel, but uh, this really just really functions well. But again, it's 3.85 inches in length. Uh, the slide, very well done. Of course, you know, your standard striker fire and you have your little striker safety right here. Here we have our locking block and we have our slide rails. And you can see how minimal they are. And typically on most of the striker fire pistols, it's a very minimal rail system. But obviously, looks very similar. <laughs> this is a Glock. Guys, it's a very simple design. It's really easy to change out parts. If you need anything, anyone can do it. And so that's one of the big appeals of the Glock, is it's so easy to work on. I've taken these completely down, every pin, every spring, and replaced parts, done whatever, and it's really easy to do. And that's one of the biggest pluses for me about the Glock pistols, is the simplicity. Uh, for reassembly, just drop in your barrel, recoil spring and guide rod, put it back over your slide, magazine, tester function, and we're good to go. And guys, while 45 was really king for a long time, and this is a bull armory, uh, this is their commander version, which has a little bit of a shorter slide than your government model. Uh, but we're holding 8 plus 1, uh, here we've got 10 plus 1, and you can see it sticks out quite a bit more this way and down at the bottom, which is typical. Uh, this just has a single stack magazine. But also, you can see that it's definitely a lot thicker. And one of the things about a 1911 is it's very pointable. Uh, with the Glock 30, it's a little thicker and it's nice. I mean, they shoot really well, but there's something very ergonomic about your 1911. But then again, you're limited to round capacity and it weighs a lot more because this is an all steel gun. You can get them with the aluminum frames that would bring the weight down, but you're just getting more mag capacity with the Model 30. And that's probably one of the biggest pluses for the Glock. So the Model 21 is your standard full-size pistol. They have the Model 41, which is your long slide version, which gets the barrel out to 5.31 inches. And then of course, your Model 30, which is your compact, and then the Model 36, which is your single stack. So there are quite a few options with 45. 
there's no manufacturer suggested retail price listed on Glock. So I just kind of compared some prices. I think on Gun Zone deals, they're running about 550. As far as pros and cons, uh, it's a Glock. It's going to be just super reliable. Uh, there's a lot of different parts that you can replace, change out. You can trick these out as far as you want to. Uh, very similar to the AR-15, there is so many different things you can do to it. And a lot of it has to do with it just being super simple. Uh, it's a fairly lightweight. Uh, the slide is heavy, but it does hold 10 rounds compared to your standard 1911 and 45 that'll go 7 to 8 rounds. So, and it's a smaller footprint. The Glock trigger, I mean, it's just the Glock trigger. You have your accessory rails, you know, you have grip adaptability with different type sizes, good texturing. I mean, the finish is going to do extremely well. There's a lot of sight options out there. And it's in 45 ACP if that's what you like. And it gives you a very reliable platform. Magazines are typically around $30 a piece, maybe $25 to $35. But, I mean, very reasonable magazines. And it's just a Glock, and a lot of people put a lot of faith in Glocks. Uh, downside is, first off, is it's just thick. And it is thick. I mean, there's no way around it. <laughs> uh, I enjoy shooting it, but I enjoy shooting my Model 19 better because I like the thinner grip. Uh, but really with this short frame feel to it or the Gen 4, it really gets it to a narrow position. Uh, when they come out with a Gen 5, if they do, and get rid of these finger grooves, it's even going to make it feel even more ergonomic, in my opinion. Again, if you have bigger hands, you're going to want a bigger grip. But for most people, uh, they will agree that the Model 30 and the Model 29 and their bigger brothers are just thick guns. I mean, you've got 10 rounds of mag capability with 45 ACP, if you're a 9mm guy, you know, that's a low round capacity. But you're getting some really good ballistics with 45 ACP. Of course, with the new 9mm self-defense loads, you're not really getting a lot of advantage. So, really, overall, if you're wanting 45, this is a great option. I would suggest, though, that if you go to your gun shop looking for one, that you get it in your hand and you just feel that grip because that is to me one of the most deciding factors and honestly one of the reasons why I got rid of my original and I really hadn't picked up one until just this past year and I really enjoy shooting these though now and with the model 21 the model 29 and the model 20 uh, I like this large frame size and honestly for the calibers they take uh, the, the little bit larger grip gives you a little more to grip hold of so overall, these are just excellent. They've been very popular now up to 25 years. Uh, and then of course the Model 21 is coming up on 30 years. One of the staples for Glocks uh, and definitely something, if you're looking for a 45 ACP, this would be an excellent choice. Low bore axis as well. That is one thing the Glocks are known for. And again, if you're shooting 45 or 10 millimeter, that really helps mitigate the recoil. So guys, if you're looking for a 45 ACP, one that you can conceal carry, uh, this is a great option. Uh, 10 plus 1 in the magazine, you can get magazine extensions. Uh, I obviously have put a magazine extension on this to give me just a little better grip. If you have larger hands, then the standard Gen 3 may be just the right size. And the Gen 4 has those back straps, uh, so you can extend it if you want. Plus, if you're already a Glock guy, I mean, going stepping right up to the 45 ACP is really easy. Now, we really appreciate Sportsman's Guide for being one of our sponsors. And they give a $20 off every $100 or more purchase using Such, no zero zero. And they have all kind of outdoor related, camping, hiking, you name it, they've got it. But one thing that I use them probably the most for is their military surplus from around the world. And if you join their buyer's club, you get a better price and you get free shipping on most items. So check out Sportsman's Guide. It's a great resource. Be strong. Be of good courage. God bless America. Long live the Republic. One good thing about um, sending us loaders. Whoops. Blocky, blocky. Blocky, clock. Did that.
that kind of awkwardly. Awkward. Oh, we got to do it smooth, people. Smooth. Got to look good for the camera. Of the Glock Model 21. And this wind, what is the wind? I mean, you can see that it's a lot thinner. I don't know if I'm going to do that. It just allows you to get a full grip on the handgun. Dudes, what are y'all doing? I'm trying. I'm out here doing a video. All right, hang up. I, I got all this on video. Hey, I'm man, what's up? <laughs> what are y'all doing on FaceTime? I have no idea. I am.